Today we are working on this 3D Toothless the Dragon Cake. First we need to work on our support, so I've got two drums which are roughly 15 inch and 13 inch and I'm going to be sticking the smaller one underneath the larger one. All I've done is place some hot glue on the drum and I'm pressing it down to stick them together. I've then got my wooden dowel. I just completely guessed at the height, it's just to hold the central cake still. You can make your dragon as big or as small as you like. I'm then marking a hole on my board where I want to place the dowel. I'm using a wooden drill bit slightly smaller in diameter to slowly work my way through the whole top drum and halfway through the bottom drum. Don't do this on your worktop, I was just showing you the start of it. You'll need a clear space underneath just in case the spike of that drill bit decides to break free out of the bottom. Fill your hole with hot glue and hammer your wooden dowel into that bottom drum. Make sure your stick is level and straight and leave it to set. Once set, add a little bit more of the hot glue around the base of the dowel for extra stability. As an even further extra step, which is not something I always do, you can add a tiny screw up through the bottom drum and into the dowel. I can find the dowel location easily because the wooden drill bit has a point on it and it's raised the paper on the bottom of the drum, so I know where to place my screw. Slowly drill the screw up into the wooden dowel. Now my screw is still sticking out a tiny little bit, which is going to scratch any work surface it's on. To remedy this, I have these little felt furniture feet that you can pick up from Ikea or Amazon. They are felt on one side and sticky on the other, and you can just stick these at four points on the bottom of the drum, which raises the profile slightly. We are adding a little bit of tape around the base where the glue is and also at the very top of the stick to cover the open end of the dowel. For the dowel itself, you can take these bubble tea straws and snip them in half. They won't always cover the whole stick in one go, but you can just use one on each side to fully cover it. These are great because they stay in place quite snugly. The last thing to cover is the glue at the base, which I'm adding some ganache over and then slipping down this small piece of greaseproof paper, squashing it into the ganache. Once this is set, it will be nice and secure. I'm just scraping out the excess ganache from underneath and placing some straight over the paper to start stacking the cakes. These are five inch round cakes and I'm stacking it four layers high with jam and buttercream filling before adding in straws to hold up the next four cakes. The straws are just bubble tea ones in a triangular formation cut to the same height. I've then got a foam core circle which is slightly smaller than the five inch cakes which gives us a little wiggle room to carve if we need to. Anything above this now will be supported by the straws. Cover your board in ganache to start sticking your next four layers of cake. Here you see me adding buttercream to grab my next layer of cake that doesn't exist because I wasn't concentrating. I didn't realise I'd already placed four layers on so now I'm having to scrape it back off. From here we're going to start carving his neck, tapering up towards the top and leaving the middle at full size for his chest that sticks out. We're just tapering in the neck and down towards the board until you have a shape a bit like this. Cover the whole thing in a layer of chocolate ganache to seal in the freshness and give it stability once it's set. Whilst that sets, we're going to make some Rice Krispie Treats. I don't have a set measurement for this, I just throw some marshmallows in a bowl and place them in the microwave for 30 seconds until they've started to melt. Sometimes they can still look like they haven't melted at all, but give them a stir and they'll turn into some fluffy white marshmallow gooiness. Now grab your Rice Krispies and throw some into the bowl. I usually cover all of my marshmallows and add in a few extra handfuls. Stir these together. 
It can take quite a while, but keep going and it will eventually merge. Whatever you do, do not touch this mixture. Do not put your spatula down anywhere other than the bowl. This stuff is stickier than a stick. You have been warned. I've got another piece of foam core, which is a little bit like an oval shape, but with a point at the front, and a hole cut at the back to slide down my dowel. I want to place the head at an angle, as I always think it gives characters a cuter look. To keep our board in this position, I'm using bubble tea straws and cutting them at different heights, higher at one side than the other. Once those two are in and I'm happy with the angle, I'm then placing one at the front to hold the chin area up. To stop the Rice Krispie Treats from sticking to your hands, you'll need to smear them in Trex, which is just veg fat, also known as Crisco in America. Take your Rice Krispie mix and start padding out the neck area around those straws. As the Rice Krispies haven't fully set yet, the marshmallow is gooey enough to push into whatever shape you want. Now the neck is done, we're going to start padding out his head. You can use a little bit of ganache to stick your Rice Krispies into position, especially for places like underneath the board. Once everything is set, it will be nice and secure. We are working on a specific scene of the movie, where Toothless draws in the sand to impress the light fury, so we're adding in a kebab stick. This is where the foam core comes in super handy, as you can push the kebab stick straight through this to hold it in position. Now coat the whole thing in chocolate ganache to smooth it out and also keep it sturdy. Back to the Rice Krispies again, you want to roll some in a long sausage and add ganache to the back to stick it to the front of the body. Instead of going straight down from top to bottom, I'm slightly wrapping from around the side towards the front. Add the two front legs and then the back legs are just half circle shapes stuck on with ganache. Allow the Rice Krispies to set a little bit and then you're able to take a sharp knife and start carving away the tops of the arms so that they merge into the body a little better. You're just taking away a lot of that top bulk and the ganache will help you merge the legs more seamlessly. Once the whole thing is ganached, you can take a small acetate smoother to try and smooth out those harsh spatula lines. Just keep adding ganache where needed and smoothing it out. I added two coats of ganache to mine. I'm also marking in the eyes and the mouth, just so I know where areas may need padding out with a little bit more ganache. Once it's fully set, spritz it with water and add in a sugar paste tail. You can make a tail from Rice Krispie Treats if you like, but it's just so thin that it's much easier to make this from paste. I've rolled out my white paste into a large piece and then rolled up either end into two sausages that meet in the middle. Place the paste on the front and unroll the two rolls around the sides, cutting the paste so you can get it past that stick. There is probably better ways to cover this, but as I know this will be textured and painted black, it doesn't matter too much where the seams are. Just keep cutting and blending the seams until the whole dragon is covered. I added in the second piece to finish the covering and you can just see where it needs to be cut through the top layer of paste. Whilst we are smoothing all this out with a small ball of squashed sugar paste, I will just explain that this is an anniversary cake ordered by a husband to his wife. I made their wedding cake several years ago which was also How to Train Your Dragon themed. He came up with this idea of the scene where Toothless is impressing his light fury with a drawing in the sand. So we decided to draw the number 10 for their 10th anniversary to impress his light fury, his wife. Which I thought was a super cute idea and this is the result. There is already a 3D toothless cake on YouTube by the very talented lovely baker. So you can also go and check that one out just in case you find her method of making him just as useful. Here I'm using the goosebumps mat just here and there rather than all over to give the indication of scales. I'm pressing in the eye sockets, a nose, 
and adding in the nostrils and then cutting out the eye sockets and removing the paste. I then cut out a strip near the mouth so his mouth was a little bit more open and I removed some of the ganache from the inside. For his back feet I'm just squashing these little ovals of paste against those half circles. His head details I've just made with little points of sugar paste, smoothed down to the head with water and the larger ones are held on with cocktail sticks, again smoothed onto the head and marked with the impression mat. Now we could airbrush this whole thing, but as he has a lot of creases, such as around the arms, it actually makes much more sense to paint him, which is probably music to your ears if you don't own an airbrush. This is actually still black airbrush colour that you pour into your airbrush gun. All I've done is tip it into a bowl instead, and I'm painting it straight on with a large brush. It will look super wet and shiny, but it will eventually dry matte, and I left mine overnight. Now you can see he is much less shiny and I'm squashing some pale green pieces of paste to add into those eye sockets. I just place in the shape and then gently push the edges towards the edges of the eye socket to fully fill them. This time I am using my airbrush, but again you can still paint them or dust them if you prefer and very gently adding some green colouring to the outer edges of the eye. It doesn't look like much, but it's just these subtle details that I love adding as it makes it look a little bit like the eyes are glowing. The pupils are a little bit like soft rectangles, which I'm just tapping in and cutting down to size. They are finished off with catch lights, two larger white balls in the corners and some smaller white ones squashed underneath it. The stick is just brown paste twirled up onto the kebab stick and scored with a Dresden tool. I also added a tiny little branch which was just stuck on with water and merged into the grain. Now despite being called toothless, he does actually have some very small teeth. These are small pieces of white paste that I'm just shaping with the softer end of my Dresden tool. I thought the teeth may cover enough of the inside of the mouth, but because I could still see behind them, I added in this sausage of brown paste and scored it to make it look like the rest of the stick in his mouth. I then just added the rest of his teeth. He's got four small white teeth and then some slightly larger fangs to the sides of these. For the scales, I'm using a different black paint so that they stand out and I'm mixing it with this hint of blue powder by Colour Splash. If you add this type of powder to any type of dark paint, you will really see it shine. I just mix the black paint with a little bit of the dust on a plate and I'm dotting on scales around his ears. You'll see as I rock it back and forth in the light, it shines this metallic blue colour. I'm adding this all at the front of his nose and around his eyes and then he has some heavy scaling around the bottoms of his legs. Then I've watered down just the black paint with plenty of water to make this wash for the stick. I'm now sticking my ribbon to the board. 
I always buy 50 millimeter ribbon as it covers the board and also any sugar paste I place above it. But instead of sugar paste, we're imitating sand. So I'm adding the ribbon now and that little lip sticking up will help contain our sugar. Brush the whole board with piping gel and tip in some light soft brown sugar. I picked this one because it looked a bit more like wet sand that Toothless was able to draw in. I'm patting it all down compact with a knife before adding some black cones of paste for his claws. His tail I'm using black sugar paste cut almost like a bat's wing for one side and then the exact same shape on the other side but in red. This is going to overhang our board and because it's travelling in a car I didn't want them to snap off in the box. So I've curled them up and it looks a bit like his tail has blown over on the windy beach. Now Toothless has already had a pair of wings that didn't quite work out how I wanted so here you are watching me make the second pair. I'm holding up my piece of foam core and I'm just drawing where I want the arch of my wings to be. I've then drawn the little dip in the middle where it's going to reach his back. Cut this out with a scalpel and make sure they are the size you want. Now you're watching me make another error. I'm marking in two points centrally on the wings. What's the problem I hear you ask? Well those central marks are going to hit the central dowel inside the cake. So now you want to move your markings either side of it with a total of four holes, two on the right side and two on the left side, which should now miss that central dowel. Push in some clear small drinking straws into these marks and chop them down. Once those clear straws are in, you want to make some wire pins. These are just straight lines with a 90 degree bend in and it's only black because my hands are full of black sugar paste. You then want to push strings of black paste down inside those straws so that the wire has something to grab hold of when that paste sets, rather than it just rattling around an empty straw. Push your four pins into those four holes, remember ignore the centre ones, and line up your pins with your straws, pushing the wing straight against the back and pushing those pins in tightly. To help give extra support, I'm adding in black sausages right down where the wing meets the body, merging the paste between the body and the wing. I should have probably cut these before, but then I decided to cut bat wing type shapes across the bottom, which was easily done with a scalpel. Brush the whole wing with piping gel before adding your paste. I covered the front and the back separately, scoring in lines for the wings on the front and also pressing in a little bit more of that goosebump texture. We're doing the same thing again and painting this on. Last thing to do is add in that all important drawing in the sand. I'm just using my Dresden tool and pushing the sugar to each side to create a channel, resulting in the number 10. And here he is all done. This was such a cute idea for an anniversary cake, especially when their wedding cake was the same theme. Hope you enjoyed watching this one. It's made me want to go back and re-watch all the How to Train Your Dragon films, as it's been quite a few years since I've seen them. You can also use this as a base for other dragon cakes. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll see you again next week. Bye guys. Thank you.